Welcome to Medicalink. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Let's learn. Hello friends. We are now going to talk about acute proliferative glomerulonephritis also known as post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So coming to the pathogenesis, it is most commonly seen in children of age 5 to 15 years and the most common organism is group A beta hemolytic streptococcal bacteria. Group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection can cause pharyngitis or skin infections like impetigo. So, bacteria from these infections can enter into the bloodstream and come to the kidney through the blood. Now, bacteria gets deposited on visceral epithelial cells that is the podocytes and it will result in planted antigen. So, here, so here the bacteria will act as a planted antigen as we had already discussed in our previous video the pathogenesis now the antibodies are formed against this bacteria this bacteria was acting as an antigen that is antibodies are formed against planted antigen in c2 that is inside the kidney now this antigen antibody complex are formed in c2 with complement deposition and will result in sub epithelial deposit which is seen on electron microscope and this will result in glomerulonephritis also remember if a patient is having hematuria or cola colored urine after one to three weeks of pharyngitis then we can suspect it to be psgn so hematuria occurring after one to three weeks of pharyngitis or within six weeks of skin infections like impetigo then you can suspect psgn that is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis in this case you will see single episode of hematuria with normal c3 level but if a patient has recurrent hematuria recurrent if a person has recurrent hematuria after one to three days here it's only one to three days whereas in psgn it was one to three weeks so if there is a recurrent hematuria after one to three days of pharyngitis then we can suspect it to be ign nephropathy in ign nephropathy initially there will be decrease in c3 level and then it will become normalized after six to eight weeks that is after two months so this is IgN nephropathy. On serology, we can do anti-streptolysin O, that is ASO titer, and anti-DNA antibody test. In cross findings, we'll see symmetrically enlarged kidney. The kidney will be enlarged 1.5 to 2 times the normal weight. So there will be enlarged kidney with petechial hemorrhage on the surface. So it will appear as a flea bitten kidney. So in a gross finding, you will see a symmetrically enlarged kidney with petechial hemorrhage on the surface, which will appear as a flea bitten kidney. In light microscope, you will see proliferations. In light microscope, you will see the glomerulus will be enlarged and hypercellular. There will be lots of proliferations of mesangial cells, endothelial cells and occasionally epithelial cells. So all the, all the cells will be proliferating and there will be infiltration of leukocytes. So the proliferation and the leukocyte infiltration is global and diffuse. So the glomerulus will be enlarged and hypercellular. And coming to the electron microscope, electron microscope is used to look for the location of deposit so immune complex dense irregular deposit that is the hump is seen on the epithelial side of the glomerular basement membrane so in electron microscope you will see sub epithelial deposits in immunofluorescence in immunofluorescence is to look for it is used to look for composition of the deposit so in case of PSGN or APGN, you will see 
IgG and complement C3 granular deposit. You will see IgG, IgG and complement C3 granular deposit which will show granular deposit pattern which will show granular pattern of deposit. So overall the prognosis is good and chronic renal failure is least commonly seen. So in APGN or PSGN chronic renal failure is least commonly seen whereas chronic renal failure is most commonly seen in case of RPGN. So this is all about post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis.